or no, it's just me. I used to be a, I was a roadie for Blink-182. Yeah, I wanted to get into this too, yeah. And we would just, you know, wreck shit backstage and mess with people. And I, I think it was in Alaska. And they were this, these people, these college kids were coming in to interview them. And so I'm like, well, let me just let, I'm just gonna lay over here naked. And so they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, wait, here. Like, co- so we covered, I laid on a table naked with chips and salsa and beans and cheese and stuff like all over my body. <laughs> and nobody, we didn't say anything. Yeah. It wasn't like, hey, hey grab some chips. It was just kind of like, all right, cool. Yeah, here, sit down. And, and they were doing this interview and eating the chips off my body. And the, the kids interviewing him, they didn't say anything for the first like 15 minutes. <laughs> so they were just tripping. They thought it was like their thing. Yeah. So that's that got that was where that picture came <laughs> right. from. First early ad. What was it like uh, hanging out with Blink One Eight Two and Green Day? And this was when they were like Yeah. Huge. I started I was a roadie. Yeah, I was a roadie and a drum tech for Blink when they were still small. And then they got to a level where um Travis Barker got in the band. So I start I started with the previous drummer, his name was Scott, normal little drum kit. Travis got in the band, drum kit got a little bigger, and I was like you know, I didn't. I didn't know how to do that, any of that. I kind of just winged it, mm-hmm. and so his drum set started getting more and more technical. And eventually, he was doing Tommy Lee spinning in the air, like yeah. on a crane and shit. But you know, for me, it was kind of like I got to this certain point where, you know, I, I just I didn't know how to set up his drum set anymore. Right. Because it kind of got out of my realm of expertise, which was nothing. Was so, he a better drummer than the dude from before? Yeah. Oh, I mean, Travis is. Like one of he's, the best. Yeah, I, he was considered. He's still considered. I'd say one of the best. Um, but I kind of, it kind of, you know, I did it for a couple of years, and then we always were homies with everybody. And so, riding in vans with boys, the documentary that my band cut you up was in, kind of just stemmed from a dare. I didn't have a band, and I remember telling the guys in Blink, you know, you guys got to listen to good. Like your music is terrible. You have to listen to good music, you know, Fugazi, Sonic Youth, Bowie. There's good music out there, and you guys are blowing it. Like, your shit's You terrible. told them that? Yeah. That their music was bad? Yeah. How did they receive that? Well, I mean, they were playing arenas, so they're like, like you know, <laughs> it's it's actually better than you might think. I'm like, no, no, no. It doesn't <laughs> matter what you're it. playing. Yeah. You don't get it. And so, you know, I, they would always, I'd always go like, you know, my band is way better than you guys. And so they finally were like, okay, well, we'll put your band on to open for us at an arena in San Diego. And I'm like, fine. So I just got some friends and we Aaron, made a what's band. Up? Uh, that was my first was, concert. Really? Yeah. Where? Uh, Cox Arena, San Diego State. Thank you. I was 16 years old. What? That was my first show. I saw Cut You Up open for... Sky. Phoenix TX That's awesome. and Blink-182. I, well, I knew I liked this guy. Aaron, was Cut You Up better than Blink? Sorry, dude. No. Yeah. Oh, well, dude. Aaron, they not alone, came out with man. two drummers, oh, though. Two drummers to start yeah. the show was pretty cool. Aaron. Was, so we were we were <laughs> an avant-garde indie rock band. And you're still playing. Still right? playing. And for that particular show, oh, that's so rad. Small world. Yeah. yeah. Um, we get, we got booed for the first <laughs> half of our set. Were you booing, Aaron? No, I was not. So we had played one show at a bar before that. Mm-hmm. So our second show ever was at an arena. With I don't know, was there twelve ten thousand people? Oh it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. giant. Yeah, it was big. huge, and we were like, oh, we don't care, you know. We didn't have anything to really lose, so um, yeah, we came out. We had space helmets on, two drummers, and we played our weird shit, booed for the first half, and then by the second half, people were kind of like getting it. That's awesome. And then uh, after we played. We caused uh, $2,500 worth of damage to our backstage room. And so we got a bad reputation. What would you guys do? So, like, you guys were breaking, like, would you guys just, like, kind of look at each other and be like, it's time to break shit? Or would one guy just come in and be like, nice microwave? And it would just <laughs> escalate. Yeah. Organic, uh, organic, it was organic escalation. Right, right. right. Um, yeah. And so it's we got that. Yeah. Shit. We got that reputation, which was totally warranted. Were you kind of the leader? Or like, um, would you set definitely the one of the instigators? Right. Yeah. I mean, we got wild. Like well, we would, we would get really wild. That's fun. Yeah. Did you break guitars and shit? Yeah, we broke guitars. What What do you play? I play um, 
I play everything poorly. Mm-hmm. Drums, bass, guitar, sing. I actually have a new single. That sounds like a band. Coming out soon uh, that I just finished the other day. And well, it's, we'll hype it on the pod. I know. don't have, it's, uh, I didn't play the saxophone on this, but I had a saxophone player come in. Nice. It is, it is sensual. It is. I mean, this is bre- this is breaking news. So we, I mean, we could save that for the. Al- I can give you a sample later if you want. Do but it. yeah, so I, you know, just kind of made it up. Yes, I play guitar. Yes, I play drums. You know, and I grew up listening to Sonic Youth and Slint and kind of avant garde music where mm-hmm. it wasn't about um, how you know how many how, chords like you do. Yeah, like and that. like yeah. making real songs. It was just kind of about playing something that sounded cool to you. So that's kind of, you know, I just the other day, I mean, I've been in a band now for 20 something years. I've, I've released a bunch of songs on my own. I was jamming with this other dad from my school. He's like, oh yeah, play a, play a E or something. I'm all, I don't know what that is. <laughs> right. like, it's pretty embarrassing. Cause yeah. I was telling him like, oh yeah, I just recorded this song. It was killer. I played, you know, I played all the instruments. Can't wait till it comes out. He's like, oh sick. All right, well let's jam. He's like, play a E. I'm like, where does I'm, my finger go for that one, you know? One? And I it's still, that's still what happens at band practice. I'll write, or write, I'll play it like a riff, right? And the rest of the band will all start jamming. And then one of the guitar players or, you know, Brand, so it's Brandon, Brendan, and Matt Amador in the band. And some of you will be like, oh, I'd be sick if you switched over to the G chord. I'm like, and that is <laughs> that. You kind of like put your finger on on the spot and look like, yeah, You're no? like testing okay, it out. Down? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Till where literally Brandon oftentimes is coming over and putting my finger where it goes. Put your finger where it goes. <laughs> Have your buddy put your finger where it goes, and good things can happen. For sure. Would uh, Would Tom DeLonge ever corner you and tell you about aliens? Oh yeah. Really? All the time. That's yes. awesome. See, yeah, yeah, what percentage of his conversation did that make up? It didn't used to be like that, um, but <laughs> it eventually it became all encompassing. It right. seems like it, yeah. All aliens, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Man. It's wild. What, what do you What do you think it was? Was he just? What do you think it was that drove him to to madness? that kind of drove yeah, him to madness or fanaticism or or um, um, obsession? But yeah, I think just you know maybe just kind of boredom with the band and you know when you're rich and you have a lot of time on your hands you can indulge in your hobbies i think more than a normal person maybe he's always been into it so it wasn't like a new thing but it's just escalating yeah exactly what was green day like green day was rad they're good dudes yeah we (laughs) we we are we became, you know, we be kind of, we went out with Blink as like their pet project, and a couple days into the tour, were kind of swayed into the Green Day camp. We weren't even supposed to talk to them. We were not supposed to. They they had it in writing, like do not engage with Green Day. They Green Day put that in the writing, or Blink yeah, well, Green Day's management oh, okay. was like, we Being don't protective. want anything to do with you guys. Because I think the way it was pitched to them was, oh, these guys are crazy. They're going to be wasted, eating acid before their shows and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, okay, well, that's your thing. Like, you need to keep them away from us. So, of course, the first thing we did, the first show was barge into their dressing room and drink all their booze. And then they (laughs) loved us. Yeah. 